Hiya, it's lovely to see you. It's Robin here. Hopefully you are now all sitting in your classroom together. Good news after all this time. For me, it means that I can get out of the house again and take my daughter to college. And we can look forward to things getting a bit easier and seeing our families again in person really soon. Let's start today by looking at a map of our local area. Two things to find. Can you find your school on the map? And can you find roughly where you live? Your school is a community that you are part of. Think of a community as a sort of giant family. Apart from the children in your school, who else is in your school community? Pause on the picture and talk about this. Think about where you live. This is another community, your street, your village, your town, full of lots of different people. I wonder, are you part of any clubs or organisations like a sports team or scouts or brownies? Do these feel a bit like families to you? Pause on the next picture and talk about what other communities or families you are part of. Churches are also communities, families of people who gather to worship God. I'm part of several church families. Here's a picture of my messy church family. Mothering Sunday comes from a long time ago when there were no cars, no TVs, no sports clubs to join, and nearly everyone went to church. So everyone was part of a church family in a way. When people moved away to work, for example, if they went to work as a servant in a big house, then once a year, on Mothering Sunday, they were given the day off to go back to their mother church. Mothering Sunday falls three weeks before Easter Sunday each year. Can you imagine if you had just one day of holiday in the whole year? I wonder what you would do with it. Pause on the picture and share your ideas. Today, Mothering Sunday has come to mean something a little bit different. It's now referred to, usually, as Mother's Day, and people may send gifts and cards to their mums, celebrate with meals together, and in church, flowers are often given to every lady in the congregation. And in June, we also have Father's Day when we celebrate dads. All our families are different. Not everybody has a mum or a dad to celebrate. Some of us have foster parents, some are adopted, some live with grandparents, some have two mums or two dads, some have step parents. There are lots of different types of families. Here's a story we're going to watch about families. It's not from the Bible, but I suspect it's the sort of story that Jesus might have told. It's called We Are Family and it's by Patricia Hegarty. We are family. Wherever we are, whatever the weather, families always stick together. Through thick and thin, happy and sad, we are there for each other in good times and bad. Warnings are busy. We hurry about, rushing backward and forward before we go out. We might eat at the table, on our laps, or a tray, spending time together before starting our day. When it's time for school, we dash out the door, 
eager to find out what the day has in store. Our journeys are different by bus, bike, or car, but family is with us wherever we are. When we feel sick and stay in our beds, family is there to soothe aching heads. They'll comfort and nurse us and take special care. And we'll be so thankful our loved ones are there. We may go on vacation or have happy fun days out. Doing things together is what family is about. The beach, the park, the countryside, any special place. We'll kick a ball, fly a kite, or play a game of chase. If ever bad things happen, they happen to us all. A fire, a flood, an illness, disappointment, or a fall. We'll cope with it together, a family as one, until the clouds have lifted and we can see the sun. Families are loving, so strong and kind and caring. We are there for one another. Problems are for sharing. We handle things together. We feel each other's pain. Family is the silver lining, the sunshine after the rain. When the day is over and we're tucked tight in our beds, all kinds of happy thoughts fill our sleepy heads. After goodnight kisses, with family all around, we drift off to dreamland, loved, safe, and sound. My favourite line in that story, and it's my experience of being part of a church family, is where it says, we handle things together, we feel each other's pain. Family is the silver lining, the sunshine after rain. Whilst I'm lucky to have an amazing mum and dad to celebrate on Mother's Day and Father's Day, I prefer to celebrate all the families and the communities that I'm part of. And I thank God for the people that help me and support me in every part of my life. Our song of the week is called Family and it's by Drew Holcomb and the Neighbours. It's a joyful celebration of family in all its wonderful variety. Enjoy. Family. Singing in the kitchen. Running through the yard, Family. going on vacation, Family. on the credit card. Family. All in this together, Family. we're taking a chance. Family. Like birds of a feather, Family. we got my shoes and dance.
daughters Family. like a photograph Family. baptized in the water Family. put me on the map all in this together Family. we're taking a chance For our prayer and reflection time, we have a prayer to watch on video, but you're going to have to read the words yourself. If not everyone in the room can read, then the teacher may want to choose someone to read the words out loud. And if you want to agree with the prayer, you can say Amen at the end. Our tricky question of the week this week is, does God like animals? I'll leave you to see what Rev Glynn has to say and to discuss what you think. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now. Bye. Glynn, tricky question this week. Does God like animals? God loves all of creation. God made all things and every part of his creation is really important to god and we need to remember that that we are a part of creation and so we're an integral part of this wonderful world that god has made in which he loves every part of it both animals humans trees birds grass whatever it might be god loves it all